if a screenwriter's making that switch from writing for film to then television, does that mean they're going to be putting in less hours or more? They will be putting in the greatest hours of their life. Uh, there is no more challenging job than writing for television on staff. Now, the, the fact is that creative writing is the loneliest job in the world, no matter what medium you are working in. It's just that the pace of television writing is a hundred times what it is in any other medium, whether it's writing novels, film, whatever it might be. And so the, the downside of that is that you're, you know, the, the requirement that you generate good product in a short period of time is intense. The pressure on these people is intense. But there's some positives. One is you don't have writer's block, right? Because with those kind of deadlines, writer's block disappears. And you find all of a sudden when you have everything you do has an intense deadline, that luxury of writer's block just disappears. You're going to have to write something. The other great advantage is that you are writing on staff. And writing staffs are a very interesting animal, especially for the psychology of the writer. Because even though writing is extremely lonely, and the sense of self-criticism is intense for all writers. When you work with the staff, it's all about cracking stories because we have to come up with a new story every week and we have to have that story worked out beat for beat, literally figure out every scene, every story event before it goes to script. And the way it's done is, it's done with everybody's in the room together, cracking stories together. And that's why in, in a writer's room, every wall is filled with the boards, the big boards, and the three by five cards that lays out every episode of the season and all of the story events in every episode. And so that requires tremendous brain power all working together. And the, the, the great part about it, probably the best part about it, is that you are in effect working in a band. You're playing in a band. You're, and and this is, these are some of the best story people working in the world. And when you're in a room with these kind of people at that kind of quality, it, and, it's, and it's all working well, it's writer's heaven because it, it I, you know I equate it it's, it's like playing with the Rolling Stones it, it's that's how good these people are they're all great at story they're all great at script and so you get this cross pollination of ideas uh, these 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 spitballing sessions where they break down a story and it, it, it appears before your eyes and it's just phenomenal to, to go through that process, especially if you love story and you love writing as much as I do. But with every band, there's Robert Plant as the front man, there's John Bonham in the back. Does there, is there a certain temperament that's more suited for someone to be in a group setting like that? Because I'm sure that then there, there's a matter of a competition or, or someone taking a back seat, things like that. What's the best temperament for a group setting like that? There is no preparation for the psychological difficulty of working in that environment. Yes, the, 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 the fun of creating story with these other story champions is, is tremendous, but the politics is intense, uh, the competition is intense, uh, sometimes there's backstabbing that goes on. Uh, I, mean, I think anybody who's worked on staff will tell you that. Uh, there is a tremendous, a very clear hierarchy that you're dealing with, starting at the top with the showrunner, and how that showrunner runs the staff makes all the difference in the world. But you have to be able to attach your ego to the larger world, to the larger you know, goal of making this show and every episode of the show work. 
and that means not only being part of the team and especially when you're starting out being at the low part of the team it also means the requirement to be able to write other people's characters and not every writer can do that that is probably the most difficult part about it because you have to in you have to absolutely submerge yourself into that the show creator's vision and if you can't do that then you don't want to be writing for television so maybe go in knowing that you're going to play a very very small part even if you're just worried about working your way up but even once you reach a mid-level that you're still a very small part in a big well I, you, 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 certainly at the beginning you're a small part mm -hmm. you, you your your part will grow but your part is really be it, 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 it's it's tremendously egalitarian in the sense that whoever comes up with the best story idea wins so you can have a tremendous impact on any show that you work for as long as you know your story skills that's why I always tell writers that's what you're really training for is become great at story because that's what that's what they're dying for that's what they have to generate so fast but where you have to really mold your ego is to understand that anything you create even your own scripts will be changed dramatically and oftentimes a script that you write that has your name on it when it finally gets to film it doesn't have a single word of what you wrote and if you can't handle that again you don't want to write for television so adaptability flexibility absolutely and, and, okay. the number one requirement right. and of the television writers that you know how many hours a day are they spending on actually writing creative stories essentially 24 hours they eat sleep talk story and write story all the time I, mean, I remember the we used to have to show up by 10 a.m. and they said well that's a, a late start except that we the earliest we got out of that room was midnight and typically into two three o'clock in the morning and then you go home uh, you get some sleep just enough time to wake up and go back in and do it for another 12 hours 12 to 14 hours and a lot of times seven days a week uh, again it depends a lot on the showrunner certain showrunners they want to make it a livable experience they don't want it to be hell to work on the show and so they try to be very organized and they try to give you at least one day off a week and so on but if the show is not that organized or the showrunner doesn't work that way then you're you're in it you know for 24 7. again the upside is that that would be the greatest training in writing that you will ever get and once you've gone through it you are completely changed as a writer should someone realistically say like look i'm sort of handing over my personal life any free time that I'm going to have for a good year or two and, and, and just know that this will become my existence. I think it's a very good approach mm -hmm. to it because that is exactly what will happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's important going in that you know that that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Be, because, the, again, the psychological shock is your biggest problem. Mm -hmm. Because the, the requirement to produce quality material that fast is something you have no matter how much training you've done in the past no matter how many screenplays you've written whether you've written novels plays and so on it will not prepare you for what you're about to face and the psychological hit is the thing you've got to be worried about especially right at the beginning it's, it's like being a rookie in anything when you first get there first break in uh, it, it, the adaptation that you have to do to what's going on in that world uh, is and on the writing level is intense but it's also you have to adjust to the psychology of the fact that you literally have no time for personal life and and especially if you're writing for a network show where you have up to 24 episodes per season 
by the time you're done with that season, that about nine months, uh, you you are this close to being dead. I remember at, at, the, at the end of, of the, the season on Jump Street, um, the head of the studio came to the showrunner and said, and this was one of Fox's early shows, and it, it was, it was it in many ways created Fox. It made Fox happen. And so uh, Jump Street with Johnny Depp was super popular. And so the, 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 the executive came to the showrunner and said, we need two more episodes. Well, we'd already done 22, 23, 24 episodes. And the showrunner said, sorry, the horses are dead. We can't get anything more out of them. They just cannot go any farther. That was the kind of intensity that one season produced on the staff.